still online. Now, something that all of you are probably pretty much aware of, maybe some of you aren't, but because the Bible tells us that in the end times, we will see signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, I feel prophetically that this is particularly noteworthy. Now, over the past few years, there have been a lot of events which do have everything to do with Bible prophecy. So I want to do a post here and inform you in case you're not aware. Maybe you don't know all the details of what exactly is going on with the sun. And to me, I think it's a, a big deal. What is happening to the sun, giant sunspot on the solar surface, spews out six massive flare in a week. Now, some of the highlights here, it says solar radiation from storms has already knocked out some radio communications on the earth. That is very important. There are a lot of preppers who, um, the only source of communication, and they know this, is going to be radio communications, such as amateur radio. But now when they say radio communication, that can affect airplanes and more, but we'll brush on that here in a moment. It says sunspot AR12192 is 14 times larger than Earth and almost as big as Jupiter. Largest sunspot in 25 years. It is so big that it can be seen in images of the sun from Earth's surface. Now, this is going to be a repeat of what the highlights were. It says a giant sunspot on the solar surface has erupted for the sixth time in a week. It is the third major flare in the last 48 hours from the sunspot, which is 14 times larger than Earth and almost as big as Jupiter. NASA said the activity confirms the area is the largest active region seen on the sun in 24 years. Now we can see a picture here and here's the area they're talking about. Let me just enlarge the screen a little bit and I'll be able to see better too because I don't have my best reading glasses on. So um, it's a little tricky. Okay, so there you can see, and then um, in a caption below the photo, it says, the bright light in the lower right, right of the sun shows an X-class solar flare on October 26th of this year as captured by NASA's SDO. This was the third X-class flare in 48 hours, which erupted from the largest active region seen on the sun in 24 years. Now, it says a giant active region on the sun erupted on October the 26, 2014, with its sixth substantial flare since October 19th, NASA said. This flare was classified as an X2 class flare, and it peaked at 6.56 a.m. This is the third X class flare in 48 hours, erupting from the largest active region seen on the sun in 24 years, which we already commented on. Previous monster storms on the sun's surface have unleashed a solar flare in the direction of Earth, and there could be more to come. Now, let's just hope that the ones coming aren't anything that's going to do um, some serious damage, because solar flares can do serious damage globally. It would seem to be just a matter of time before another strong explosion occurs, said SpaceWeather.com's Tony Phillips. Space Weather Prediction Center forecaster Christopher Balch, meanwhile, said the flare affected radio that uses part of the upper atmosphere. Now, here's some notes they have on solar storms on the Earth. Okay, I'm going to um, highlight those with you. It says solar flares can damage satellites and have an enormous financial cost. The charged particles can also threaten airlines by disturbing the Earth's magnetic field. Very large flares can even create currents within electricity grids and knock out energy supplies. Now, they do mention something positive. I don't know how positive this is. Really, to be honest, it says a positive aspect from an aesthetic point of view is that the auroras are enhanced. So if you like to go look at the auroras, there you go. But I don't really consider that a positive. Um, when you compare it to the damage and um, the intensity of damage that a solar flare, if bad enough, can really do. Geomagnetic storms are more disruptive now than in the past because of our greater dependence on technical systems that can be affected by electric currents. And that is very true. We are so dependent upon electricity and our technology that we would not know what to do with ourselves. We would be in a total state of panic and shock if we get one bad enough that could really do some serious damage. Even if it wasn't 
everywhere globally that it did the damage, like maybe it was here, there, and a, a few other places, that would be enough to cause some chaos. Now it says here that Mr. Balch said the storm briefly was rated as strong for affecting Earth's radio systems, but then it dropped to minor levels. So it was briefly very bad, but then very quickly dropped to minor levels. But, you know, technically speaking, all you need is a solar storm like that for just a few moments to be bad enough to do some serious damage, okay? One event even temporarily blacked out a few radio communication systems before weakening, which we've mentioned now several times, and you can see up close. This is the same picture as up here, but they've magnified this part of it in blue, and it says an X-class flare erupted from the sun October 25th as seen as a bright flash of light in this image from NASA's SDO. The image shows extreme ultraviolet light in the 131 angstrom wavelength, which highlights the intensely hot material in a flare and which is typically colorized in teal. So that's why they've got it in this blue color for you to see. Now, if you recall, we were hearing all this stuff on solar flares back in 2013, and then suddenly there's been silence. There hasn't been a lot of activity, nothing really noteworthy. And it confirms that here. It says the event followed months of near silent activity on the sun before the huge flare erupted from a sunspot 14 times bigger than the Earth. Again, 14 times bigger than the Earth is the sunspot that this flare erupted from. So that's huge if you can try to imagine that. That is a big deal. A spokesperson for the Met Office Space Weather Operations Center told Mail Online it may be the biggest sunspot in 25 years. Okay, there's another photo. Here they've just got this part highlighted. Here is the whole thing in teal. Okay, it says they said in the UK there had been no reports of any disruption at all. There may have been short periods of outage in radio communication, but nothing has been reported as causing problems. So that's over in the UK, no problems. Flares are massive explosions on the sun associated with sunspots. Hopefully all of you listening already know that as much as we've heard about solar flares over the past couple of years. Magnetic fields in sunspots can store vast amounts of energy, but looping magnetic field lines can get tangled up and snap, releasing their energy as explosions called flares. And they've got some photos for you. Now here's another little note. It says sunspot AR12192, the one we're talking about here, is 14 times larger than Earth and almost as big as Jupiter. The Met Office told Mail Online it might be the largest sunspot in 25 years, which we just talked about. It is so big that it can be seen in images of the sun from the Earth's surface. Here's some more pictures for you. And here it says the light area in the center of this image, right here, is the largest sunspot in this 11-year solar cycle, says the Met Office, and it may also have been the largest sunspot for 25 years. Now, that's also interesting when you consider we have the coming blood moons and the whole blood moon um, discussions that are going on, um, prophetically speaking, in the Shemitah year. Okay, we just started the new Shemitah year cycle. Um, gosh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was like last week or week before last. I want to say week before last. Yesterday's flare was an X1.6, which is a million times the combined yield of every single nuclear weapon on the Earth. That's powerful. Okay. The sun erupted with another significant flare today, peaking at 1028 a.m. on October 22nd, 2014, revealed NASA. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory captured images of the event which occurred in the lower half of the sun, which we've looked at. This flare is classified as an X.16 class flare. Yes, we know. We just mentioned that. Um, X class flares denote the most extreme flares. You need to understand that. Okay. It was classified as an X1.6 flare, which denotes the most extreme flares. Here we are in the beginning of a new Shemitah year, seven year cycle, and we have the most extreme solar flare in 25 years. Noteworthy. This is the third substantial flare from the same region of the sun since October 19th. So it's the third substantial. In other words, it was the third worth mentioning. It is the biggest 
of those three. But it's the, the third significant flare from that same region of the sun um, since October 19th of this year. Dr. Young of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center added, it continues to grow in size and complexity. So it's continuing to grow and becoming more complex. Here they've got a um, animated image, a GIF. It says the sunspot group. Active region 2192 has doubled in size to become one of the biggest groups in years and has been described by astronomy experts as menacing. Okay, so even astronomy experts don't have anything good to say about this. They refer to it as menacing. So it's frightful. Okay, it says up close. So you're seeing the monster sunspot up close here. Um, AR12192 taken by Karzaman Ahmad on October the 21st, 2014 from Lake Kaui National Observatory in Malaysia. The solar flares are powerful bursts of radiation for the 10 millionth time. NASA says harmful radiation from a flare cannot pass through Earth's atmosphere to physically affect humans on the ground. But when intense enough, they can disturb the atmosphere in the layer where GPS and communication signals travel. So they can do some serious damage. So where a solar flare that's um, that bad cannot really harm us as far as the radiation from it, it can be a slow death when you consider all of the things on the earth that would be affected. Car batteries, even batteries, yes, would be affected. You know, gas pumps, anything, electricity, I mean, anything and everything. I can't, I mean, I could make a list so long, it could be a book of everything that we are dependent upon that this would affect. And what's more is I would say the good majority of people out there are not prepared for such an event. If you're a believer in the Bible and in Bible prophecy, and you can clearly look around and see how things are unfolding and happening, then you know we're in the end times. Okay, you know that. Do not think for one minute that we're not going to be touched by any of these events. Okay, there's nothing in the Bible that says that we're not going to be touched by anything. Can't find that. Yet, people every day are saying, well, I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to be sucked away in the rapture before anything happens. Where does it say that? Where does it say that nothing's going to happen that is going to touch you. It does not. Okay. There's no guarantee of that. So you're being ignorant by not preparing and careless. Okay. Let's just finish up and wrap this up here. It says, according to experts at the Sunday today.org as of October 22nd, the region's trailing spots have an area of 2410 MH or millionths of a visible solar hemisphere. The largest up until now had been AR11967 on February 5th of this year, measuring 1580 MH. MH is a standard measured used by astronomers for area. Just to provide some scale, the surface area of Earth is 169 MH. This means that AR12192 is 14 times larger than the surface area of Earth. And there are some videos, and I will find this video on YouTube to post along with my video. And let's see what this says. According to NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory team, a single dynamic active region unleashed over half a dozen solar flares in about 24 hours. From 25 to 26th of August, the two larger flares were M-class moderate flares, and the others were smaller flares. This animation shows an ejection associated with the flares. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. I've given you the information. I will provide the link on my article that I'm going to do on this on Before It's News. Please watch this, pray, and by all means, be prepared. If nothing happens and you prepare yourself, what harm can come? Nothing. But if something happens and you do not prepare, there can be much harm to come. If you love your family, and even if you don't value your life because you're in Christ, you don't want to suffer unnecessarily. Be prepared. Thank you so much and God bless you.